Hey YouTube, Jedi Fuka here, and in this video we're going to have a little bit of spoiler warning, so if you don't want to see the final boss of the new story in Season 2, then go ahead and back off of the video. Um, I don't want to ruin it for you, but for those of you who do stick around, we're going to go over the final boss's kit, and I'm going to show you guys my run. Um, that way you can see how it operates. I'm not doing really a guide on how to beat the boss just yet. I just want to do this guide to discuss the kit, discuss a few champions who might help you out with it, and then show you the team that I'm using. So we're going to go ahead and get on into it. So this is where the final boss is at here. I did beat this on stage 2 the level 100, which is the highest I'm able to do um, right now until we get a little bit further. See, we got to be at level 30 before we can start doing the third stage, which we got to get prepped for this anyways before we're doing 3 and 4. It's going to take a while to get up there. So anyways, we're going to go over the kit real quick. We have two phases with the boss. The first phase is the Chaos Surf with these Abyssal Touches. And then the next phase is the actual boss itself, which is the Abyssalosis. <laughs> That's a mouthful. So, all right. So the Chaos Surf here is immune to, for control immunity, which is normal for bosses, and then ultimate down immunity, which is new. It's a good thing they put it in there, though, so you can't just use the same champions to keep resetting their bar. Now you have to do a little bit different strategy than some of the other bosses for getting turns off. The moves is that we summon these abyssal touches, um, and they do a knocked up, which is a control effect on your people. And then the other move is that it gives us attack up and attack speed up. So... The way to handle this first wave is, one, we want to be removing these attack up and attack speeds, and we need to kill these as fast as possible because she just keeps creating more. So you want an AoE damage dealer, and you want someone to either prevent or remove these because once you start getting a bunch of these guys spawn, it becomes a little bit of a headache trying to kill them while you're taking that much damage. So a few ways to do that. The team I use, I use Voresh, and he prevents this from happening. You can also use an AoE debuff remover like Dane or someone like that. Um, some of them will only take off one at a time on the more free-to-play friendly champions. Some will take off both. So depending on who you have, depends on how you can deal with that. If you have someone like Voresh who gives that um, like debuff block type thing, it just completely blocks them. So they never put them up in the first place. And then the other thing you got to worry about is this knocked up. Uh, one way you can handle this is I'm going to show you guys there's two epic tanks who can prevent this from happening and it's also good to use them as your tanks because on the final boss he also does some more. So going into the next phase once you beat them and you deal with those two things we get the final boss here who same thing control immunity ultimate immunity down. Um, now for the ultimate down remember you can still use ultimate up on your champion so if you're still trying to find a way to keep moving your people faster you can use some skill haste epic gear or you can use someone who has an ultimate up for your team. I use Sagamir. He uses an ultimate up on a single target or someone like Megan who has the uh, she's rare with the defense up and she'll give one person an ultimate up on her A2. Someone like that can still help you cycle some abilities. Now for the moves, they have a recharge speed penalty. So you can either ignore this or try to get it off. The way to get it off is to use someone like your rare Enna, someone with the um, cleanse for you, or you can just ignore it and try to keep your team moving to see if you can manage without worrying about this one too much. The next one is just going to be a normal hit. You just got to be able to survive. And then we get this one. It does a hit with a charmed, so another control. So this boss is about its control, and we want to try to either prevent the controls or we're just going to have to power through them. And the last one here is also more control, fear, and stun. And then the boss gets this um, weaken if you break its shield. So this is kind of like the ice dungeon where the boss will throw up a shield. You have so much time to break it. And if you don't break it, you get the extra effect. So for this one, um, if the shield is broken, it gets weakened on the boss. So it's good if you could break the shield. So going into our champions real quick, we're going to show you some people that might help you out and I'm going to show you guys my run. Um, I did use Garius um, in my run however you're going to see I turned his ultimate off and like the one or two times I click it I was pretty much at full health so it didn't do anything anyway so you definitely don't need Garius as your tank when you're watching my team run um, but what you do need is some control immunity which there's two tanks who offer it. We have Irma here in the Necro um, Necrosis she does this control immunity and damage reduction to the champions around her. So as long as you position people close enough, she'll prevent those controls from happening. And we also have Lydia here who does a full map control immunity. 
Um, this one is really good. So if you have one of these two tanks, I highly recommend them for this boss because it's going to help you prevent that control from ever happening. Or if you got lucky, I pulled this new legendary. I haven't tried him yet, but he also does a control immunity and an attack penalty um, for your team. So, But that's not the free-to-play friendly version unless you got lucky getting them. We got those two tanks right there to try out. The other things that you need to be um, worrying about is trying to cleanse some of those debuffs. So for me, I'm, of course, using my legendary because it's what I have. Well, let's take this out of here. I use Jillian here. She has a cleanse along with her heal and defense up on this where she cleanses one of the debuffs. So she helps with that recharge speed penalty there at the end. Um, so she's a good one to have. But if you don't have her, you can use someone like Enna. Let me come down here to our lightning. Enna right here does a full team um, cleanse as well, taking one debuff off. So that's someone else who can help you with those cleanses. Now, the other thing that you got to worry about, like I said, the beginning of the boss, getting that attack up. Um, I am using Voresh. He has debuff prohibition so you need something that prevents them from getting those buffs or you need someone to be removing them so just keep that in mind as you're doing your teams and then your damage dealer for me i'm using oster he's really powerful it's just once again kind of the same as last season unfortunately i'm kind of using some of the same people because my pulls were not that great this season um the only thing that benefited me this season is i got a uh extra artifact but i'm not using really any of my new champions yet because i haven't got to where i like have a spot to plug them in um for the beginning of the season it's mostly about leveling up your champions and so my frost team is what's going to help me do that and then i'll build those other champions i pulled for other content later but anyways guys that's it for this i'm going to show the run if you guys want to watch that you can see how the boss works how my team operates and give you an idea of what to build for when you come up on this or if you're on my server and you're trying to beat it give me an idea of what you need that's it. Y'all have a good one. So goodbye for us. You have to say it, baby. And now some texts are cold. You want to try, baby. I know you can. I know your heart. And you will figure out. Figure